Hi guys and welcome back to another video here on the Pickle Jar. My name's Josh and today we're going to be making a Christmas themed diorama based on the best Christmas film ever. I'll catch you after this. Pickle Jar! Pickle Jar! Miniatures! Excellent! Hi guys and welcome back to the channel for another painting video. If you are enjoying the content make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're new and check out the links in the description if you want to help support the channel. So last year I put out my first Christmas video on the channel where I painted up the Red Gobbo, which was a limited edition miniature from Games Workshop. Now I had a lot of fun painting this miniature, I really enjoyed painting it and putting the video out, but I wanted to do something a little bit different this year. So over the last few weeks I've been sat thinking, what can I do for a Christmas video? And I decided that I finally wanted to have a go at doing a bit of a diorama. Now when I say diorama, I actually mean it's going to be more of a vignette, which is a word that I have recently discovered it does not just apply to plays and shows and things like that, but actually it can be applied to anything. So a vignette is kind of like a small diorama or one particular scene uh, of something. And that is what I'm going to be doing today. Next, I had to decide what was the subject going to be for my vignette. Such a fun word to say, vignette. So I had a quick look through some of my favourite Christmas films and decided that there was really no contender. It was only ever going to be one film. The best Christmas film, Die Hard. With so many iconic moments from the movie, I had to narrow it down and pick one moment that I wanted to try and recreate in miniature form. Now, the first thing that I had to take into account was being able to get hold of a miniature to represent the one and only John McClane. So I decided to go this route first and see what miniatures I could get that looked like John McClane and then see what pose they were in and then what scene I would be able to do from the movie from that. One of the guys from the Chilling Network, Mr. Elsa, Destination. If you're not subscribed to his channel, there's a link in the top right hand corner right now. Hit me up with a link to this guy from Studio Miniatures. Now this guy was perfect, he's obviously supposed to be John McLean. So I sent an order out and sat waiting for him to arrive. Now I needed to decide what scene from the movie do I want to recreate with this miniature. Now my original intention was to do the welcome to the party pal through the window, like smashed window. <laughs> As that is one of the most iconic scenes. Another idea was with his hands up, with the gun strapped to his back at the end of the film. <laughs> <laughs> but because of the pose of the model, because of what it was, I decided to go for another iconic scene in the movie. I'm talking about the part of the movie quite towards the end where John McClane is stuck in the office area and Hans Gruber tells his companion to shoot the glass. The glass goes everywhere, John McClane gets all his feet cut up. That's the part that I wanted to go for, mainly because the miniature hasn't got any shoes on. He's got bare feet with bandages on, so I thought that this is what this model is supposed to be for. So I took to my bits box to see if I'd got anything that I could use to make the scene for this uh, vignette that I'm putting together. Now I found this old part of, I think it's part of an old movement tray or something. I'll be honest, it's not something that I've bought. It's been handed down to me in a box full of loads of old bits. So all I did was cut this down to size so it was a bit more appropriate sized. And then I found these other parts as well, which I'm not entirely sure what these are for. They're from some sort of kit. But again, I thought that these would suit for the sort of girders holding up the different bits of glass in the offices. I wasn't worried about putting too much detail in because the main focus of the vignette was going to be the miniature itself and then all the glass bits that I'd been putting on it later on. So all I did for this was glue the two support on either end down and then glue two together and put those down in the middle. Um, and then what I did as well was add just a little bit of support going across the top just to try and hold these together a little bit better rather than having them just completely freestanding. I base cursed this in Chaos Black Primer and left it to one side to dry while I focused on the miniature himself. Now the miniature is a really nice model. It's not the most super detailed, but it is fantastic for what I needed it for. 
I looked at plenty of reference photos from the film to get the colours right and to try and get the sort of look right on the model so that you can tell who it is. Painting the model was a lot of fun mainly because there's not a great deal of detail to put onto this guy and it is more about getting the colours right so that you can tell who this is supposed to be. Started off with a mix of McCrag blue and black for a base coat on the trousers and then put a very slight highlight on of pure McCrag blue. For the vest top, I started with a base coat of Ulthwin Grey. I then mixed in a bit of a burn colour to give a slightly creamier colour and applied that over the top and then watered down some more Ulthwin Grey and applied that as kind of a wash over the top. I didn't want this to be completely white and I didn't want it to be cream. I wanted it to be sort of a mix of the two and I thought that this would be the best way to do that. Once that was all on and dry, it was time to dirty that tank top up. The scene that we are doing is towards the end of the film, once his vest is completely filthy, covered in blood and muck and all that good stuff. So I wanted to represent that with the miniature. To do this, all I'm doing is applying various washers in different areas and different amounts, just to give that stained, dirty look. The two that I'm using are Bealtan Green and Agrax Earthshade in different amounts and different volumes, waiting for one to dry, going back over it again, and I think that this actually gave a really nice dirty look. Once I'd finished with the tank top, it was time to tackle the skin. Now, skin is something that I've been working on for a while. I'm trying to improve how I do my skin tones, and so I'm painting more and more models that have got flesh on them. For the flesh on this guy, I just used two paints. I started with a base of rat skin flesh and then added in some Kislev flesh for the next layer up and then for a final highlight just added pure Kislev flesh. I'm watering all these down so that they're not going on too thick and I'm actually really really happy with the skin on this guy. Once the skin was done it was just time to add a few details. I added some brown for the belt going around the top of his trousers painted his hair brown and then did a quick dry brush with a couple of greys on the gun. There wasn't any def definite detail on the gun to pick out which is why I decided to go with a quick dry brush just to pick up some of the edges so that it wasn't just a flat black gun and I then added a little bit of metallic to the magazine and to a couple of areas on the top. It's time to add the final finishing touches to this guy and that is just to cover him in blood basically. For this, I'm using a mix of Blood for the Blood God with some Agrax Earthshade just to darken it down. I find that Blood for the Blood God is a bit bright to go on as blood for most things and I prefer to have a bit of a browny tint to it, which is why I'm adding in some Agrax Earthshade. Again, I looked at reference photos as to where his big patches of blood are and decided to try and represent that on the model. So he's got the one on his neck going down onto his vest, he's got some on his face, he's got a few on his arms, and then obviously all over his feet. Once that was on, I did go back and add a little bit of Blood for the Blood God just by itself, just around some of the areas that I'd done, just to show that some of it is fresh blood and some of it is sort of dried and congealing. With the miniature finished, it was time to work on the scene itself. Now, all I did for this was a lot of dry brushing for the floor, working up through various greys, and then going up to Ulthwin Grey, which is sort of an off-white, really, more than a grey, and just focusing this towards the centre of each of the squares on the floor, just to show that each tile is individual. It wasn't a particularly difficult process. I didn't put a great deal of effort into it because the majority of this is going to be covered up anyway. For the support beams, again, all I did was give a quick dry brush of grey because I didn't want to mess about trying to take the focus away and they were more like a steely colour anyway in the film. I didn't want to just put metallic on them because it would stand out quite a lot. So I decided a quick dry brush just to pick up the edges would work fine. Again, this is my first attempt at doing anything like this. I've never done a vignette before. I've never really done too many dioramas before. So this is all new to me and I'm just enjoying having a go at it. With the majority of the scene itself done, I decided to put John McClane onto the model and just to see how it looked all together. My first thing that I noticed was that the scale is slightly off. Now this isn't too big an issue, but it is definitely something that I need to take into consideration before. Maybe I should have sort of done a test fit before to see what the scale would be like. Maybe I would have done a smaller area for the base. I don't know, but this is something that I'm just going to have to learn this time and try better next time. 
Now I've got John McLean on and I've got the base more or less painted up to where I want it to be. It's time to add in some of the other details and some of that is the glass. Now I'm taking a little bit of artistic license here because obviously in the film the glass gets shot and it shatters and goes everywhere. There's nothing left standing in the areas where the glass was. Now. I can't do that because otherwise it'd just be two big blank spaces behind him. So I've decided to add some shattered glass behind him and then add the shattered glass to the floor as well. What I'm doing for this is taking an old fern screen protector and just giving it a good whack to create loads of cracks and areas where it looks like it's been shot. And then I'm breaking this apart into a few different pieces and then gluing this onto the back of the support structures so that it looks like shattered glass and yeah, I think it looks fine. One thing to bear in mind if you're planning on doing something similar to this yourself is that this is actual glass. The screen protector is actual glass. So be very careful because there'll be tiny little parts of this that'll go everywhere. I got a few on my hand. I had to make sure I gave the desk a good clean once I'd finished doing this and around my desk because I didn't want any of the sort of glass particles to be going anywhere and getting in anyone's hands and feet or anything like that. Now, I wanted to add some of the blood streaking on the floor. There's a part a little bit after the scene that we're portraying where he goes into the bathroom to clean his feet up and you see the, the, the blood being streaked across the floor as he's dragging his feet because he's had to walk across all the shattered glass. So I wanted to add some of that blood in here. So all I'm doing is once again taking Blood for the Blood God and Agrax Earthshade, mixing those together and just creating some streaks on the floor to show where he's walked, where he's been dragging his feet. And then once that was on and dry, just go over it again with some pure Blood for the Blood God Add a little bit of that in, not too much because I don't want it to be too bright, but just add a little bit in just to add some different tones to the blood. It's now time to add the shattered glass onto the base of this miniature and for that I'm using this. Now this is from Wilkinson's which is a shop here in the UK and this is something that you can buy around this time of year. It's designed to be like fake snow but it actually works quite well as shattered glass or I think it does at least. You'll have to let me know down below in the comments if you agree. All I'm doing for this is applying PVA glue all over the base, fairly thin, not going on too thick with this, but applying some PVA glue all over the base because that will dry nice and clear once it's dried. And then all I'm going to do is sprinkle this all over the base. But all this is, it's just little bits of shredded plastic. And all I'm doing is sprinkling this all over the base. I'll tip it and brush off any excess and then put it to one side and wait for that to dry. I think this stuff cost me about a pound and I bought it just on a whim thinking it might come in useful for some sort of diorama or Christmassy type thing and it has done but I'm using it as glass not snow. Final finishing touch to finish the model off is just to add a bit of blood splatter. So I took blood for the blood god just by itself this time, didn't mix in any Agrax Earthshade and took in toothbrush that I use for this sort of thing and proceeded just to flick the blood at the model, at the base, on the over the top of the glass just to add some nice blood splatter on there and that's this guy completely finished. the model I am quite happy with how it turned out I know that it's not going to be the most amazing there are people out there that will go that looks rubbish but I'm really really happy with how this turned out there are a few things that I would have done differently next time uh, the scale like I said earlier is slightly off the windows are a little bit taller than they maybe should be the glass obviously isn't the right scale because compared to his feet it's massive that's shattered all over the floor but I think it gives the effect and you can tell what this is supposed to be the miniature itself I'm really happy with the paint job I put on it it does get dirty down quite a lot and a lot of the detail that I did put in with the highlights and stuff on the skin is sort of covered up but that's just kind of how it had to be I couldn't have him being completely pristine and clean so I had to add like the blood and things like that all in all I'm very happy with my Christmas diorama and this is one that I'm gonna be getting out every year to put up with our Christmas decorations so there you go guys, that was my attempt at doing a Christmas diorama based on the best Christmas film ever. What did you think of the model? Did you like it? Let me know down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, if you did be sure to leave a like and a comment down below and if you're brand new, don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the content we've got coming in the future. If you want to see more of me, I live stream here every Wednesday evening on the Pickle Jar at 8pm and I help host the show over on the Chilling Wargamers channel on Thursdays at 8pm. 
If you want to support the channel, there are links down below in the description where you can do that. You visit our merch store or you can donate directly to the channel. The Pickle Jar are proudly sponsored by Broken Turd. Now, Broken Turd make the best brushes on the planet. If you want to help yourself to some of those, go and check out the link down below in the description. Pick up some of the Mark III's or the Fugazi range. You will not regret it. They are the best brushes I have ever used and I'm super happy to be able to say that they now sponsor the channel. That's all from me, guys. I'll see you next week with another video.